Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 is my favorite verse in the whole Bible. Let's read it right now. It says, my old self has been crucified with Christ and I no longer uh, I live, but Christ lives in me. Everybody say out loud, Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The title of this talk is Full Control. Everybody bow your heads and let's pray. Father, you take control of this moment and these next few minutes that we have together. And you speak through your word, challenge us, empower us, inspire us. Not because of anything we may do, but because of the work of your Holy Spirit, Jesus. We pray these things in your name. Amen. We all at some point or another have lost control of something or someone. Maybe even of ourselves. And sometimes that may happen all at the same time. One of the times when I lost control of a thing was the first and only time that I got to fly a plane. It's been a dream of mine to be a pilot since I was a little kid. And I've never been able to accomplish that, but my wife gave me for Christmas one year a gift certificate for a one hour of flight instruction. And so I showed up to the airport that morning. I was ready to go. I got in this plane with this instructor, and I thought I was going to fly the plane. Really what it was is he was going to uh, let me sit next to him while he was flying the plane, which I still thought this, that it was going to be great. We lived in South Florida at the time, and it was amazing to get up in the air and to feel uh, the breeze against the plane. It was a little Cessna, which feels like a love seat that you're flying around over the ocean. And at some point, he said, you can take the helm. I'm pretending that's what that's called in a plane. I don't really know what that's called. And so I took the helm and I thought that I knew how to fly a plane from watching movies. And what do you do when if you have seen a movie, you've seen how people fly these machines. Uh, my first instinct was to want to turn it left and to see if I can do a loop. And so I turned the plane this way and instead of doing a loop, this plane started to dip toward the ocean. Now, at that moment, you would think that somebody in that position would just think of their whole lives because they're about to die. Not me. All I could think about was my internal organs because I just had a big breakfast that morning. And so I figured uh, at that moment that something was going to come out of my body, uh, something that was gonna come out uh, of uh, these organs that are right here that rhyme with the word vowels. And so I thought that all my vowels were going to come out of that moment, A, E, I, all of them, all over that cockpit. I was so scared that we were going to die. And at some point, the pilot took the helm from me, and he stabilized the plane, and he took full control back, and then he reprimanded me and said, what are you doing? You're not supposed to do that. You don't know how to fly this plane yet. And it was such a lesson for me because oftentimes when we lose control of something or someone or even of ourselves, it's because we are taking control thinking that we know how to have control of our lives, of the lives of others, of the things that God has given us to steward, of our own hearts. See, God, as the creator of the world, he knows exactly how our uh, lives are supposed to function, and he gives us an opportunity to experience him being in control. Galatians is a book that was written in the New Testament by somebody called Paul. And Paul was uh, a missionary and a leader that was planting churches all over the Roman Empire. And he had planted this church in a region called Galatia. And it was a church that was experiencing division. And they were making one another do all these things so they could show their faith. And so Paul writes them a letter basically to say you are losing control. And that is creating division because you're wanting to take control by imposing on others all these rules and regulations that they're not supposed to have. And in Galatians uh, 2.20, he tells them, you need to understand that it is Christ who lives in you. And through him, he can have control and bring unity where there was disunity. Now, when we talk about Christ, we have to remember who he is. We have to remember he is the one that the angels announced when he came to this world. And that they did so, uh, and his whole birth was fulfilling several prophecies in the Old Testament, showing us that he is indeed the Son of God. This same Christ that 
died on the cross uh, f- and for our sins and his death cleared the penalty that we all have to pay. And then on the third day after his death, he came back and conquered death. And that conquering showed us the power of his resurrection. That same God that did all that for us is the God that we can give over control to. And is the one person in our lives that should have control and authority over who we are. Because he is God. Because he is holy. You see, that word holy means be, the, being anointed, being, being the one who has been set apart for a purpose. And this purpose in Jesus was the purpose of giving us forgiveness and salvation. Jesus is outside of time and space. He, he was not somebody who sinned. He uh, was somebody that was infinitely powerful and continues to be infinitely powerful. But what we do in our lives is that even for some of us, knowing all that, we want to take away control from him and we want to be the ones taking control of our lives and we forget That his authority, his holiness, his righteousness is one of the best things. In fact, it is the best thing that can happen in our lives. Because when we take control, we actually tend to lose it. Here's the big idea for this morning. Is that when my life is out of control, because of his authority, because of his holiness, I can ask Jesus to take over. And how do I do that? Well, that same verse in Galatians chapter 2 shows us several things. There are a couple of words that we cannot gloss over, which are the words Christ lives. And he's saying that because by the time that Paul writes this letter to the church in Galatia, he uh, has already experienced the power of the resurrection. Jesus has already come back to life. And over years and years and years, decades of ministry, they are seeing the power of Jesus. And in order for us to understand that Jesus can take over in our lives, we have to discover his power. Everybody say, discover his power. The the fancy theological word for this is omnipotent. Omnipotent, which means the one who has all the power. How much would you want one who, somebody who has that much power to be in control of your life? Uh, when I was in uh, middle school, there was this uh, kid who was bullying me so much. And I've always been one of the shorter ones um, in every aspect of my life, in every space that I've been a part of, including school. And this dude was, he was big and he was robust. And every time he saw me, he would run toward me and he would push me and I would fall. And I had no other way of responding to him except that one year, uh, another friend of mine who was about the same height and the same weight joined our school and on the very first day we were walking together and this bully ran toward me to try and push me but this other friend that I had who was bigger than me and stronger than me he stood in front of me like a wall and it was such a beautiful sight to see that bully bump into that wall and fall to the ground and then my friend said if you mess with him you mess with me. See, when, when, when in life, it's not about the battles that we have to fight. It's about who is on our side to fight our battles with. It's the fact that when we are in Jesus, he is the one that stands before us because of his power. That doesn't mean that he's going to rid our lives from problems or trials. But it does mean that the ultimate problem and trial of sin, he is going to stop. He will protect you from some things. In other things, he may allow some level of pain and suffering. But even in that, the power of Jesus is something that you can discover and you can give him control of your life. In fact, you can let Jesus have full control of your life because he's powerfully holy. Let's keep reading in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. There's another few words that I want to draw our attention to where it says, By trusting in the Son of God, all of this that I'm saying, says Paul, that Christ lives in me that I no longer live is because I get to trust him. See, in order to give Jesus full control of our lives, we have to trust his direction over my perception. We have to trust God's direction over human perception. It, it, it means that we have to trust 
where he wants to guide us. We have to trust that he has a better idea, that our plans are just way too small for the plans that he has for our lives. That our plans may not be the best for us, but he already knows what is the best for us that ultimately will not be just for us. It will be for the kingdom. It will be for the glory of his name. Let me tell you about the day I met my wife. I was a college student in South America, and uh, I was beginning to go back to church after a season of being away from God. And on this particular day, I was tired. I had to commute back to my home for uh, about an hour and a half by taking two subway lines, one bus, and then climb up this hill. So I received a text in my flip phone. Some of you all uh, don't even know what a flip phone is. Uh, it's, It's this ancient artifact that we used to use to communicate with one another. And my youth pastor tells, sends me this text saying, I have a group of English-speaking American students in your school. Will you come translate for us? And yo, I was so tired. Everything hurt. My brain was fried. And I had to commute back home. So I started walking the half a mile that I needed to work from, walk from school to the subway station. And the whole time I was grumbling with God, I don't want to go help my youth pastor. I don't want to go help my youth pastor. I don't, why do, what did you even give me a youth pastor? And so I kept walking. And by the time that I got to the subway station, I remember that I had prayed a prayer that the Lord wanted to answer in that moment. Lord, use me. Except that it was inconvenient at that moment. It was so inconvenient because I was tired. I wanted to go home. I wanted to go see my friends. I wanted to see my family. I wanted to go eat. But it was inconvenient, yet God had been trying to get me to understand that he was answering that prayer at that moment. And so right before getting into the subway station, I took a big breath and I said, okay, God, if this is what you have for me, I'll go do the thing. And I turned around and I found this group that needed help translating the gospel from their English language into Spanish so they could share it with other students. And that's what we did for the next few hours. And I was tired and it took a lot of work. But it was the most beautiful moment of that season of my life and one of the top three of my whole life because it was the moment when I met my wife. She was part of that group. I did tell you she was hot. (laughs) So you're not wrong. See, we have to understand that we have to trust his direction, that we have to trust the steps that he puts in front of us. Proverbs 9, 10 says, fear the Lord Fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. I can trust his direction because in the fear that I have, I can can trust in his authority. I can trust in his holiness instead of my perception because Jesus is all-knowing. Now, back in that verse in Galatians 2.20, it says that Christ lives in me. And this phrase ought to let us know that we have to give the presence of Jesus every space of our lives. The presence of Jesus has to be the greatest presence in our hearts and in our minds. And we have to understand that he is always with us. And for those of us who struggle with loneliness, we have to understand that when we're, when we're in Jesus, he gives us a promise. That it's in Matthew 28, 19 and 20. He says, therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this. Tell the person next to you, be sure. He says, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That when we trust in his authority, when we trust in his holiness, when we trust in his power, he remains with us at all times. During the good times and the bad times, we can give him full control because he is with us because that's what he has promised. I will finish with this. When I was young, During a summer camp, they took us to this cave, and as the clumsy kid that I was and still remain, I still am very clumsy, and it all started in in my childhood. And so I remember I was part of this group, and I was toward the back of the line, hanging out with my friends, and, and, and at some point, I felt and I thought that all the guides... All the adults were ahead of us. And so um, I began to run back to where I was. And as I started to run, uh, my friend pushed me. And I had the flashlight. And the flashlight fell in the cave. And there was no light whatsoever. At that point, I felt fear like I had never felt in my life. 
And then all of a sudden I felt a set of hands propping me up and touching my head. I, I could feel a lot of liquid coming down from my forehead, which I thought was a lot of sweat because I sweat a lot, but it was actually blood. And I felt somebody hugging me and telling me, I am with you. I'm going to get you out of here. And it was the one adult that had been waiting back and making sure that we were safe. And so they took me and they walked me to the, end of the, to the entrance of the cave and they uh, were able to fix me up and take me to a hospital because even in darkness, this person was with me. You can give Jesus full control of your life because he has all power, because he knows everything there is to know about your life and you can trust him with your life because he is with you always, even when you are walking through dark times, because he is our authority and we can trust in the holiness of Jesus with our lives. Amen? Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, thank you for this time. Lead us. You speak through this uh, word, through uh, this verse for this whole week. Um, and continue to speak uh, to each one of our hearts, even beyond these few minutes that we spent together. But later today, throughout the night, and uh, even in our sleep, Holy Spirit, minister to us that we can learn how to give you full control of every aspect of our lives. We pray these things in your name, Jesus, Son of God. Amen. God bless you.